we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek His protection and His guidance. We ask for Allah's help. And whomever Allah befriends, Allah guides them to Surat al Mustaqim. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, we rely upon Allah the Almighty. Whomever Allah guides can never be misguided. And whomever Allah allows to be misguided, they can never be guided aright. Bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship besides Allah the Almighty, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's messenger and his servant. Brothers and sisters, I want to give as a theme of today's khutbah from the 17th chapter of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Bani Israel. One verse. And I want the brothers and sisters as well, married and single, young and old, to pay attention to this ayah or this sign, this verse from Al-Quran. لَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا Why? إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَ وَسَاءَ سَبِيلَ This is the khutbah for today. Allah reveals in Quran, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Do not go near zina. Don't go near it. Don't go near zina. What is zina? Illegal sexual intercourse. Don't go near. Fornication. Adultery. Don't Go near. Why? I'm going to talk about that in this khutbah. For those Muslims who believe it's no big thing, it's okay, it's not such a bad thing, I want you to know today, inshallah, not only are we not going to commit zina, the iznilah, we're never going to commit adultery or fornication, we never, we make intention, never, ever from this day, everyone here, never, ever commit fornication and adultery. Never do it. But not only that, I want this community, those who are here today and those who listen to this tape ten years from now, a hundred years from now, not only not to do it, but don't even go near it. That's the objective of this khutbah. To get us in a position that we don't even go near zina, fornication, adultery, illegal sexual intercourse. Don't go near it. Innahu kana fahisha. It is an abomination, Allah says in Quran. It is so bad. It is an excess. One of the worst things you could ever do is commit zina, illegal sexual activity. Fornication, if you're not married to a woman, to commit a Intimacy with her is a big sin, major sin, one of the worst sins in Islam. And if you are married and commit zina, it is even worse than fornication. It is a big, big sin. Innahu kana fahisha. It is an abomination, Allah says in Quran. Wasa'a sabila. And an evil, bad road. Or away. لا تقربوا زنا إنه كان فاعشة وساء سبيلة. Don't go near fornication or adultery. Don't go near it. It is an abomination and an evil way. Brothers and sisters, uh, Wednesday, I was on the plane coming back from Washington D.C. from a meeting that took place. Many of the imams around the country got together with some of the Muslims from Algeria, from the, um, the front of Islamic salvation in, in Algeria. We had a meeting to show the commitment of the Muslims in America to help our Muslims in Algeria. Alhamdulillah. And the Imams there, the A'imma, we made a commitment 
to help our brothers and sisters in Algeria. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless that nation to establish the deen of Islam. Alhamdulillah. On my way back to uh, New York City Wednesday, I was sitting on the plane on the owl seat and I had my computer out and I was typing on my computer and the man next to me, a young man, 22 years old, was watching me as I was typing. I saw him watching me, so I made sure I typed some good things. And um, actually I was preparing a note for this khutbah. The title of this khutbah is La Takrudu Zina, Don't Go Near Zina. And the subtitle is Dayton Opens the Door to Zina. Dating, dating, D-A-T-I-N-G. Dating opens wide the door to fornication and adultery. Muslims don't date. What? Muslims don't date. I'm going to tell you soon what we do do, but we don't date. So I was preparing this khutbah, dating in Islam. And this person next to me, this young man, kept looking, and I know he was looking. So he finally said, um, sir, is that um, something Islamic that you're preparing? And of course, I had Quran, I had Allah, I had the Messenger, and, and things like that. And I said, yes. He says, um, uh-huh, um, what is it? What is it? He was very curious. I said, oh, I'm, I'm going to give a lecture this Friday, inshallah, about dating in Islam. And Muslims, we don't date. He said, what, you don't date? I said, no, we, we, don't, we don't date. I said, what we do, and see, in this society, men and women, they go out together, they go to parties together, they do things alone together, and they're even intimate, even before marriage. He said, yes. I said, you date? He said, yes, yes, of course I date. I said, um, do you, are you, do you get involved with them intimately? Yes, of course. I said, you know, drink wine? I said, you know, Muslim, we don't drink wine. He said, yes, of course I drink wine. So we had a good conversation. Oh, you know what I did? Actually, I closed the computer and I spent the whole time, the entire trip, wallahi, talking to this young man about Islam and the Islamic concept of dating. Wallahi, wallahi, everything I said, he said, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Even he, we get off the plane together, went down to baggage claim together, and he stayed with me. I gave him a card to our masjid. And you know what, brothers and sisters, were lying. this young 22-year-old man was a typical American. Typical in their thinking and their understanding about this topic of dating. But only one thing I didn't tell you. This young man, a student from Binghamton, SUNY, the State University of New York, is a Muslim. He's a what? Muslim. And you know what, brothers and sisters? You may be surprised. But you know what? Don't be. Last night, me and some brothers were in my office. Late last night. I got a phone call from one of the Muslim activists in Toronto, Canada. Say, Imam, I got to talk to you. There's an article in the newspaper in Toronto of some Muslims who have come out of the closet. Muslim homosexuals and lesbians about to start a masjid. I told you months ago. I predicted. I said, watch. Soon you're going to have the first masjid of gays and lesbians. I said it right on this member. I predicted it. Why? I'm not a prophet. I didn't see the Quran and Sunnah, but I know the way the people are moving, Muslims even, in this country, if they don't, are not guided by Quran and Sunnah, they will do everything else that the people in this society do. Can you imagine Muslims now, gays? I said, I'm brother. Can you imagine now, 
going to open up a masjid, brother, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the name of the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you know what? It's not strange. Really. If you study the trend, even among the Jews, have the Orthodox Jews who are very serious about Torah, very serious about the teachings. Then you have some conservatives who are not as serious. And then you have some Jews that are so liberal that they actually eat pork. No, this is true, brothers and sisters. And you know what? If we're not careful, we have Muslims doing the same thing. And you know what? Those brothers and sisters in Toronto must not allow those so-called Muslims to open up a house in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under lesbianism and homosexuality. And I thought, if they don't do it there, if they don't stop it, we're going to come here. Whatever brother want to go with me, we'll go to Toronto. And we go there and we won't let them establish it. Now, I don't know who want to go with me. Now, I'll let you know that when we go fight them, these homosexuals are going to pick it to Matthew. So, brothers and sisters, dating. Two Muslims date. You're not going to find a verse in the Quran, thou shalt not date. It's not there. You find no hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in uh, Bukhari hadith and Muslim hadith and Tirmidhi and Abu Dawood and Nisa'i ibn Majah. You won't find one hadith that says Muslims are not allowed to date. But what you will find from Quran and Sunnah are principles. Now, brothers and sisters, once you learn these principles, you can answer all of the questions because you know the principle. What is the principle? What is the guiding principle about dating? So you don't have to ask the imam, Imam, are we allowed to date? No. Once you understand the principle, then you know, man, in Islam, Muslims don't date. What there is, is intention for marriage. Now, brothers and sisters, what is the guiding principle? The guiding principle in Islam is this verse from the Quran. La taqrabu azina. Just a few points about zina, fornication and adultery in this society. You see, brothers and sisters, the problem that we have always as Muslims is that we are accustomed to the ways of the West. The Kufra society, we're accustomed to it. They commit fornication and adultery, we do it. By the way, this young man that I met on the plane is from Tanzania. Tanzania. Um, born there, but his ancestors from Pakistan. He told me that um, he had a girlfriend, a Muslim girlfriend. And he met at school, met at college. Where a lot of your uh, girls will meet boys in college. He met her, and she didn't tell her father about him, because she knows the father knows better than that. The father would never accept that. It just so happened that the father accidentally got a letter from this young man to his daughter, and then he uh, confronted her and told her that he can't, she can't continue seeing this young man. And, and, and by the way, this wasn't a young man obviously very good in the religion because he even told me that sometimes he shows some pictures of him and some girls hugging in the hands around her, the, the, the other girls, you know, uh, side and stuff like that. And she got attitude. His Muslim girlfriend got attitude with that. Muslim girlfriend. That sounds strange, doesn't it? Because brother and sister, there's no boyfriend and girlfriend in Islam. We don't have boyfriend and girlfriend like, you know, we're just friends, a platonic relationship. We don't have that in Islam. No. How, how would you feel, brothers, who's married, that your wife said, oh yeah, I'm going with my friend George. We knew each other in college and we're going out together just for a social date. And we, we just talk on the phone. We're friends, brother. Do you allow your wife to do that? I hope you don't. 
Some of you brothers are so liberal, say, oh yeah, honey, it's okay. I trust my wife, it's okay. You go talk to any boy, man you want to talk to. No, it's not okay, brother. Don't do that. Because that's not the Islamic way. La taqrabu zina. Don't go near zina. Innahu kana fa'isha wa sa'asabila. It is an abomination and an evil way. But this society, this society, almost everybody is engaged in zina. In fact, if you're not, you're looked upon as strange. What's the matter with you? Even one brother told me on his job, he's a security, he works on security, one of his jobs. And he says, some of the other Muslim brothers, listen brothers carefully, some of the other Muslim brothers on security, that work security in this particular location, some of the other brothers always playing around with the women, laughing and joking and touching the women. But he doesn't do that because he understands the verse, La Taqrabu Zina, don't go near Zina. So then one of the women asked him, he said, uh, you funny? Because brothers and sisters, you look strange when you don't act like these people here. When you try to be modest and you lower your gaze when looking and when talking to women, they think you're strange because Allah says, lower the gaze. So you try to lower the gaze and they think you're funny. They think you're strange. So brothers and sisters, in this society, you know something? Nobody knows the exact figures how many people commit adultery in this society. How they figure out, they take surveys and polls and things like that, and they make some rough estimates. So I've read different books about how many people commit adultery, and they make a difference between the men and the women committing zina and marriage. It seems to be a consensus that something like 70% of married men commit adultery. Can you imagine seven out of ten men in this society, this corporate society, committing adultery? And not quite the same number of women, but approaching 60% of the women in this society commit adultery. I mean, they're married. And I don't mean just adultery once with just one person, but several mates. This is indicative of this society. So they, not only do they not, not go near it, they in fact engage in it. What about premarital sex? According to some statistics that I read, some polls, something like two-thirds of the young men and women engage in intimacy before marriage. Now, brothers and sisters, you know, that's a lot. But I go a step further than that. You know why so many people of this society doesn't? Because the government, A, doesn't discourage it, and two, they in fact encourage it. They don't discourage Zina, they don't discourage it. What do you mean they don't discourage it? In most of the states of this country, there is no law against fornication or adultery. And when the states that do have laws, they're not enforced. So in this society, who consent an adult? That's what they say. As long as you're two consenting adults, it's already all right to do zina. It's okay, you're an adult, man and woman, you know what you're doing, it's okay, go ahead. Allah said, don't go near it. And you know, they say, it's okay. A, they don't have any enforcement against it. You can commit it, there's no crime. They don't even, they won't even arrest you, they won't indict you, they'll do nothing. You can literally, brother, sleep with a hundred women, and this society will do nothing to you. It's an fa'isha with Allah, it's an abomination with Allah, but this society is okay. They don't discourage it. Two, they in fact encourage it. You know, sometimes, brothers, you can be sitting down reading, not even thinking about women, but they'll do something some of these women in this society to draw your attention. Wallahi Azim, once I was on the plane and I was studying, I was reading, 
I mean, I didn't know what time it was. I was studying, reading Quran, I was doing some research, and all of a sudden, my head went up and looked to the right. Almost involuntarily. I didn't, I couldn't even help myself. I was reading the words of Quran, and my head went up and looked to the right. Why? Some woman had some kind of perfume that just grabbed my attention and turned my head to see where the smell was coming from. And you know what? They do it on purpose. That's the purpose of that perfume. The women put on the perfume to get the attention of men, to let men look at them, to grab their attention. In the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Quran, in Quran, that people, they're in the days of jahiliyyah, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرَّجَ الْجَهَلِيَةِ الْأُولَى I read it last week from uh, Quran. And stay quietly in your homes and do not make a dazzling display like you made the dazzling display in the days of Jahiliyyah. So some women now, they put on a, a little anklet bracelet or put on bracelets that make a lot of noise. You, you want to get the attention of some man. You want some man or some uh, a young boy to look at you. So they try to grab your attention. And not only that, poor brother trying to lower his gaze walks in the street and the women are absolutely naked. Believe me, the supreme or the high law of the land, the appellate court, they don't have to pass a law saying that the women can expose their breasts. They've already been exposing, exposing themselves and their breasts. That's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu cursed the women who are naked even though they were dressed. Some of these women have clothing on, but they're naked because the clothing is so tight and invisible that you can see everything, and this society encourages it. Poor young brothers and sisters, all they want to do is go to school, learn, get out of school. But this society incites them everywhere you look. I understand there's some television programs. Years ago now, we were coming up, there was a program called The Dating Game. But now they got something similar, I think, called Studs. And per personal something. You know what I'm talking about. But these are hard. Do you understand what they're doing, brothers and sisters? Do you understand what these devils who control the media are doing, enticing you, exciting you, exciting your children, your boys, and your girls? So by the time they go to junior high school, everything is all flowing and they want to get involved because everywhere you look in the society, they encourage you to do zina. Why? Because they're being controlled by shaitan. This society, America, wallahi azim, wallahi azim, wallahi azim, America is controlled by shaitan. American government is controlled by Satan. American way of life is controlled by Satan. It is. Oh, yes, it is. Definitely. No doubt about it. Did you know, brothers? This society, America, their society like to read a lot. Did you know that they like to read novels and other things like that? Do you know that 40% of the novels of this society... 40% are romance novels. Now listen to me well, brothers. Listen to me well. 98 to 99% of the women, of the readers of romance novels are women. Over 25 million American women read romance novels. You know, so what's, the, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What's the subject matter in the romance novels? And after the women read the romance novels, what do they have? 25 million women not reading Quran, not reading Sunnah, but reading romance novels. Daytime operas, uh, uh, soap operas. What is the message there? Adultery and fornication, zina, deception, lying. Chicanery, trickery. That's what's in it. How many Muslim women and girls are reading romance novels and why? Why are you reading this romance novel? Why? Don't you know it's affecting your mind? 
I say to you brothers and sisters as I sit down, this society does everything not only to encourage zina, fornication and adultery, but they do everything to open up the door and the road that leads to fornication and adultery. We say, لا تقربوا زنا إنه كان ساحشة وساء سبيلا. Don't go near fornication and adultery. It is a an abomination and an evil road or an evil way. والحمد لله رب العالمين. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى صحبه أجمعين. أما بعد. Now, brothers and sisters, let me take a few moments to say this to you and we go, inshallah. لا لا تقربوا الزنا إنه كان فحشا وسأس بلا Don't go near it. Why should we not go near? Brothers and sisters, do you ever get angry at someone? And usually when you get angry, you respond a certain way. Zina causes Allah to get angry. Allah gets angry. غَيْرُ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا الظَّالِينَ Any, many ayahs in Quran talks about Allah's anger. And if you are afraid of your father and your mother when they get angry. Or when you are affected by someone's anger and you feel affected by it, what about Allah's anger? Allah is angry as we know. Think about it. Whether you are Muslim or not, zina is an abomination in the nostrils of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hates it. And because he hates it, his anger is not emotional. His anger is controlled. So Allah hates it so much that He tries to put it in a way that His servants are prevented from going near it. Because if you in fact do it, He's going to punish you. Now, brothers and sisters, Allah reminds us in Quran. And you know something? We read the Quran all the time. Sometimes you may be in your salat and the Imam or yourself, you may read this ayah from Quran in the 24th surah of Qur'an and the man who commits zina fajlidu fajlidu kulla wahida minhuma with them both of them with them miyatal jalda a hundred kites in Qur'an azzaniyatu wa zani fajlidu kulla wahida minhuma miyatal jalda with them a hundred times. One, two, three, four, five, six, hundred times with them. And don't you let compassion move you in the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I told you to whip them. That's a lie. Oh, oh, that's a nice sister, nice brother. Hundred lashes, man! And don't let compassion move you! Do what I say do! And let a portion of the believers witness it, the punishment. Now, I'm going to stop here for a moment. And brothers and sisters, I want to read this to you. And I want everyone to understand this hadith recorded in Muslim, and then we go, inshallah. Listen to this. Now I want to do it in Arabic because the brothers who speak Arabic only, I want them to know and understand this hadith, inshallah. An Abi Mujayd Imran al Hussein al Khuzai. رضي الله عنهما أن امرأة من جحيمة 
اتت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهي هبلة من الزنا صح فم جو نجيد عمران الحسين الخزاعي he said that a woman from the tribe of Zuhay, Zuhayna came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa hiya hubla min azina and she became pregnant as a result of adultery see the word in Quran zina means either fornication or adultery if you commit zina and you're single the punishment in Islam is a hundred lashes if you commit zina and you're married the punishment is death by stoning capital punishment what we read in Quran is a punishment for fornication but the punishment for marriage and committing zina is death by stoning Stop. You know how angry Allah is by the degree of his punishment for breaking the law. Allah is angry at you when you steal. He sees you. Punishment? Chop off your hand. He's angry. When you drink, brother, punishment? Lashes. You take drugs, punishment? Lashes. And by the way, brothers, while I'm on this, I advise all of you brothers, if you smoke cigarettes, stop it. If you smoke cigarettes, stop it. Some scholars say it's haram, absolutely. But at least makruha, hate it. And please, brothers, please, if you're weak enough to smoke cigarettes, don't walk out in front of our masjid and light up a cigarette in front of our masjid, in front of our children. My children saw one of you light up a cigarette. So a brother, light up cigarettes and and my children said, Daddy, it's okay, we can smoke cigarettes? Because their motto are the Muslims. They, they look what the Muslims do. My children never thought about cigarettes before. But because some Muslim brother walks out the masjid, he lights up a cigarette right in front of the masjid. If you weak, man, get out of here. Don't do it in front of the masjid, man. Go private somewhere. Go somewhere and hide, man. Because it's a, you should be ashamed of yourself. Spending your money instead of spending money, jihad, peace, and peace, or sadaqa in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You buy some cigarettes and support the kufrs. And hurt yourself. And breath smell bad. And smoke in people's eyes. I don't want it. I hate it. Don't come near me. I don't want you. I don't want to smoke. Don't you smoke near me and your Muslim brother and sister who don't like smoke. Why would you violate their, 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 uh, their area? If I were you, the cigarettes that you have in your pocket, throw them away. When this quick bar is over, go to the garbage and throw the cigarettes away. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah is angry. Punishment for adultery, zina, brother? Serious. Death by stoning. So this woman came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she had become pregnant because she committed adultery. Fakalat, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Asabtu Hadda. I have done something that requires Hadd, punishment, Hudud, legal punishment. Fakimu Alayya. So punish me. She knew the punishment. She went and volunteered, came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, I have committed adultery and now I'm pregnant as a result of the adultery. And I can imagine her husband now. Stop. What did the Prophet say? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet summons her wali, her guardian. And he said, Ahsan ilayha. Treat her good. فَإِذَا وَدَّعَتْ فَأْتِنِي And when she has the baby, treat her nice. Treat her nice. She's pregnant. 
And when she has the baby, then bring her back to me. فَسَعَلَ فَأَمْرَ بِهَا نَبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَشُدَّتْ عَلَيْهَا ثِيَابُهَا And so, after the woman had the baby, and he brought her back to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he had her clothes tightened around her. You see, brothers and sisters, even if you're going to punish someone, you still have to keep the right adab. Because if you're going to punish the woman, you can't expose her. You can expose nothing from her, according to the Sharia. So, he made sure that her clothing wouldn't come loose. He's about to do the punishment. Thumma, anara, anara biha, saruji nat. Thumma, salla alayha, subhanallah. He ordered that she be stoned to death. Thumma salla alayha. Subhanallah. Isn't this beautiful the way the hadith is? Then he says, and then he prayed over her. Prayed what? Janaza. She was stoned to death. The Prophet prayed Janaza over her. فَقَالَ لَهُ أُمَّرْ رَضِ اللَّهُ عَنْهِ Then Umar said, فُسَلِّ عَلَيْهَا يَرْسُولُ اللَّهِ فَقَدَّ الزَّنَاكِ You made prayer over her and this woman committed zina. She committed adultery and you're doing a janazah over this woman? This is Umar ibn al-Khattab radi Allah an. You don't understand, man. This woman did this horrible thing and now you make janazah over her. The honor, he honored her with making janazah salat over her. فَقَالَ <coughs> Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَقَدْ تَابَتْ تَوْبَةً لَا قُسِمَتْ بَيْنَا سَبْعِينَ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ لَوَسِعَتْ هُمْ لَوَسِعَتْ هُمْ Subhanallah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this woman made such a repentance. You see, you got to make tawbah, brother. Sister, you got to make what? Tawbah, repentance. That she made such a sincere repentance that if this repentance was spread over 70 people of Medina, it would suffice all of them. SubhanAllah. Listen to this, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. وَحَلْ وَجَدْتَ أَفْدَلَ مِنْ أَنْ جَعَدْ بِنَفْسِهَا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He says, have you ever seen a person who laid down their lives voluntarily for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Here's a woman. She committed zina, man. She didn't hide. She didn't run. She didn't go to another country. She didn't lie and say, oh, this is my husband's baby like so many women do. She stood up and said, I committed zina, I committed adultery, I'm ready to die for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, when she had the baby, she didn't run to another country. She didn't try to escape. She came willingly and laid down her life. Because she made repentance, man, she just sorry for what she did. But some of us, Muslims commit zina <laughs> every day. It's nothing. La taqrabu zina. La taqrabu zina. Don't go near zina. Innahu kana fahisha. Brothers and sisters, I leave you with this. Dating is one of the doors that go to zina. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can live in a society, an Islamic society, brothers, where our daughters can go in the street and not worry about being molested by men. Where our wives and our mothers and our sisters can go in this society and not worry about some men hitting on her. So what, what, what must we do? Protect our society. How? One of the ways, brothers, get married. Married, marriage is sunnah. Marriage helps you to lower your gaze and guard your modesty. 
When you have a wife, you have a good wife. The prophet said when you see a woman, sometimes brothers are out there enticing the men. And the men are affected by it. He said, go to your wife. Your wife has the same thing that she has. Go to your wife and let the Muslim women be available for a husband. Because when you're married, it helps you to lower your gaze. Yes. I encourage you brothers, get married. Two. If you engage to be married to a Muslim sister, what does that mean? Oh, we, we engage now, we could, we could do everything, we can go everywhere, we can be alone. No, it doesn't mean that. Still go with chaperones. Don't go places in private by yourself. Why? Your honor, sister's at stake. You don't walk around here with any man. Even if you intend to get married, don't go near the now. Some say, well, we're going to get married soon anyway. We'll be married next month. We'll be married next year. So we might as well get an early start. Let's talk about the now. Don't go near it. Don't go near the now. Careful of the videos that you watch. If you watch X-rated videos, you go in there, Zina. If you read pornography, you go in there, Zina. If you go to parties, you go in there, Zina. If you take humra, you go in there, Zina. If you listen to some of this enticing music, you're walking towards Zina. And that's why Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Allah has written a portion of fornication and adultery for the sons and daughters of Adam. When he look with the eyes, he commits zina with the eyes. When he listens to talk that he shouldn't talk, listen to, he commits zina with the ear. And the feet, when they walk toward what you should not walk toward, you commit zina with the feet. And the heart is affected by what you see and what you hear. And then the private part either confirms or denies. Let us be deniers of Zina. Don't go near it. Be careful. Scream what our children, our wives, and ourselves watch over the airways. Because we say, I'm strong enough that they won't bother me. I could do it. I can be along with that sister, not me. No, not you. Believe me, brother, it'll happen to you. The key, the wisdom, not takar buzina. Don't go near it. Brothers and sisters, I close with this. I see us creating a new society. Our job as Muslims, brothers and sisters, is to do what the Prophet did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he do? He reformed the society. He did what? He reformed the society. Islam is a religion of reformation and transformation. You want to transform America? It begins with transforming yourself. Now, brothers and sisters, let's face it. One day Allah is going to test you and give you control over people. Maybe give you control of a city, a state, a country, a nation. How will you do? Will you rule with Islam? You know what? You don't have to wait then. You can be tested right now. How do you do with yourself? Do you control your own self from committing zina and your family? Reform, brothers and sisters, yourself, your family, the jama'at, the ummah. Inshallah, we will form the American way of life. La taqrabu zina, don't go near zina. Innahu kana sahisha wa sa'asabila. It is an abomination and an evil way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and protect every one of us from zina. Oh Allah, make us never to commit zina. Oh Allah, make our wives never to commit zina. Oh Allah, bless our children never to commit zina. Oh Allah, bless our sisters never to commit zina. Oh Allah, bless our husbands never to commit zina. Our fathers never to commit zina. Our sons, our grandsons never to commit zina. Oh Allah, keep us on Surat al mustaqim Oh Allah, help us to stay away from the things that lead to zina. Oh Allah, make us righteous, purify our hearts and take out hypocrisy from our hearts. All our strength and our deen, strengthen our faith and help us and guide us and strengthen us. Mm-hmm.